Nature Guy X46 here, and today we are still sitting at 30 subscribers. Thank you very much for that. If you learned something from today's video, give it a like, subscribe if you're not, and chances are you're not, and click that notification bell so you never miss another video. And now let's get into our topic for today. And our topic for today was a request from one of my subscribers about ticks. So this week, all the videos are going to be tick-focused. Um, so with that, let's get into it. So ticks are an ectoparasite, meaning that they live or attach to the host on the outside of the body. They live off of blood of mammals, birds, reptiles, and even amphibians. There are over 800 species of ticks across the world, and they all feed on blood, like I mentioned above. Tick bites cannot be felt. And this keeps them from being discovered because obviously if the animal, if you could feel it, you'd probably try to get rid of it. They also have chemicals in their saliva that keep the blood from coagulating or clotting. Only a handful of ticks spread disease. Ticks can't fly, they can't jump, however, um, you can pick them up by walking in tall grass or even messing in leaf litter. Ticks pick up diseases by biting other um, animals that are infected. In the United States, there are 16 different diseases spread by ticks. Now, this next part is important. When you buy devices to remove ticks, and you can, and you can use those, they're, they're great. You also will, you, or you can use a pair of fine tipped tweezers. Now, what you would want to do is carefully grab the tick by the back with even pressure and you're going to lift straight up. After the tick is removed, you want to put alcohol on it. On the bite mark. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, that's a good idea too. But after you remove the tick, you want to preserve it. You, you can put it in alcohol, you can put it in a baggie. Uh, or inside another container. You can also, if you really want to, you can flush it down the toilet. The idea behind preserving it is so that doctors can see it. And if need be, they can identify it. You want to make sure that you wash the area with soap and water or put alcohol on it. If you experience a fever or a rash after the bite, see your doctor immediately. Um, if, you, if you know the following, be sure to tell them when the bite occurred, if you know, and where you think the bite occurred. You may also want to tell them if you are, um, if you were visiting another state, also tell them that. There are tons of resources on ticks on the, CD, the CDC website. I encourage you to check out that information. You can find maps showing where certain ticks live um, that are vectors or carriers for diseases. In this case, knowledge is power and it can help you. Ticks must pick up the bacteria or the virus from already infected animals or perhaps people. Now, a little bit more about ticks. 
Ticks are an arachnid, meaning they're related to spiders and scorpions and mites. The fossil record shows that they've been around for about 90 million years, so they've been around a long time. And tomorrow, you're going to learn a little bit more about them. Um, and, yeah, we're also going to be talking about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever this week. Um, and I know it's I know it's winter time, but we're still going to talk about tick prevention, and we're going to talk about our organism of the week, which is the Lone Star Tick. So with that, I'm going to let you go. Hopefully, you had a great day. I hope your your Halloween was awesome, and I will talk to you peeps later. Goodbye.